Hey people, Anthony for Before Diesel. Brake fluid change, brake fluid flush, brake bleeding. Here we go. Okay, a bit of background info. We didn't use the blue brake fluid on this. Okay, so a bit of general information. Brake fluid should be changed every two years. It's hygroscopic, which means it absorbs moisture. So over time, so let's just say the new product might have a boiling point of, you know, 250, 280, 270, 300, whatever it is, depending on what product it is, but thereabouts. And we should know that water boils at about 100 degrees. Well, I'll say about just to cover myself in case I'm not as educated as I think I might be, but exactly 100, but, you know, thereabouts, you know, depending on your thermometer. But uh, so what happens is if brake fluid is hygroscopic and it absorbs moisture, that means over time its boiling point reduces because it's going back towards being water because it absorbs water. Where does it get it from? Well, nothing's sealed 100%. That's why it's important to use sealed containers when changing the brake That's fluid. That's why it costs a bit more, but we use the 500 mil bottles of Toyota brake fluid. It costs more, but you get a quality job. You know it's a sealed container. Now, of course, if you're a brake specialist and you're pumping it out, you can buy it in 20 litre drums like that oil there or whatever it is, transmission oil. You can do that. Keep it clean, be very careful with it because if you're adding anything that's got moisture, it's not going to be like a brand new product. So this is what we use anyway. Generally, when you change your brake pads or shoes or anything like that, the truth of the matter is you don't need to bleed the brakes unless you've opened up the system and got air in there, which in the case of changing, um, you know, wheel cylinders on a, a vehicle that's got drum brakes and brake shoes, then you need to get that air out. Now, obviously, air goes to the top, so if there's any air in here, it comes to the top. But while we open up the bleeders and the fluid flows down fast enough, then all the air comes to the top of the caliper. So what we're going to do here is, like I said, every two years or by Toyota's schedule, it's every 40,000 kilometre service. They've somehow estimated that's every two years. A lot of vehicles says every two years. They all vary a little bit. But the general rule is every two years, every 40,000 Ks. There's no such thing as doing it too much because how long is a piece of string? I mean... You know, when it's two months old, six months old, it's the boiling point's already dropped. So there's no point, there's no such thing as doing it too much. So that's why what we do, what we recommend is every 40,000 Ks or every two years, or if you can't think how long it's been, then you better do it because it's long overdue. And when we do our brakes, we do it again. In case we missed it every two years or every 40,000, like I said, there's no such thing as doing it too much. Those bottles are about 10 bucks each. You're only going to need two. So for $20 every couple of years. So... As if you've been watching the videos, we've recently done change the brakes on the Hilux. So in all fairness, we want to get fresh fluid in there. Fresh fluid helps look after everything. Now, the reason I'm doing this video, there's a number of reasons really, but one of them is if you're pumping your brake pedal, this master cylinder is 10 years old, right? It's the master cylinder down under there. It's 10 years old. It's used to normal travel. That's a small amount of in and out on the brake, not going all the way to the floor. So once you've got something that's 10 years old and you don't know the maintenance on it, Pushing the pedal to the floor is risky because there could be contaminants, debris there that get behind the seals and cause leaks and problems in that master cylinder, causing you problems. Therefore, the best way to bleed the brakes, and people will argue this, you can get equipment, you can go and spend money again because they want to sell your stuff. But for your DIY, that's what this information is. And even in workshops, the brakes can bleed themselves while you're doing other jobs, just don't forget. So what we're going to do here, you can have a syringe, you can buy a big syringe, they are a bit expensive, or you could just use a bit of clear PVC tube, get a gravity feed going. But what you want to do, there's a little filter. I'm going to vac out some of this. When I say vac out, I'm going to evacuate it, drain it, suction it out. doesn't matter. That won't be on the video because I need my hands. But I'm going to suck it out. There's a little filter there, which I don't know why, because there's no debris is going to be in the bottle bigger than that. But whatever. So we're also going to take that out so we can get down as low as possible with a small tube into the master cylinder reservoir here and suck it all out as much as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and step by step give you more of information like I've already given you and sort of show you how to do things and why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to clear that out. It's important that you use clean things. There's no point washing something and putting it in there with water because you're going to get water and it needs to be clean and dry and we're going to get out as much as we can. The other important message is brake fluid, not good for your paintwork. Don't just wipe it off. If you spill brake fluid on the paintwork, Use a damp cloth in the short term just to clean it up and get it off. And then once you're all done and you close this and seal it up, you need to wash it down. Wash the vehicle, get some soapy water. Make sure there's no brake fluid left on anything that you want paint. Have you seen it where paint flakes off and whatever around master cylinder where they used to leak out here down the bottom? Brake fluid is like paint stripper. Might take a few weeks or a few months, but believe me, clean it off ASAP. I mean, you know, 
half an hour, an hour will be okay. Don't panic and start throwing water everywhere and it goes in here because that'll be worse again. There's all things to think about. That's why I'm still yakking. Okay, I'm going to drain this out. Okay, here we go. So that's about as much as we could get out without too much trouble. That's fine. It's down to the minimum. Now, you can bleed it all out and run it dry if you like, but I'm not too worried about it because we do regular brake fluid changes. You never get it all out. So I'm actually going to... We're just going to do the front brakes for today because we did the front uh, pads and rotors. Keep it a simple DIY solution. All you need to do... Normally, you've got a rubber boot on the back of that caliper there, but in this case, we don't have one. we just got to grab a 10 mil spanner. People are going to talk about which order or what to do things, and we'll get to that in a moment. But while we're doing that, let's just open those up, right? And that's all we need to do. Open up a little bit like that, and you'll see the fluid starts dripping out immediately. All right, we've just got a drain tray underneath there to catch it. Keep it simple. Now, you can get all these little one-way valves and you can put tubes on and do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, when you connect and disconnect the tube here, it's going to leak and you're still going to need to wash it and clean it up. So what's the difference, right? So just let it go like that. Drip, drip, drip on there and go wherever it's going to go. We've got to wash everything with water at the end anyway. Same at the other side. Let's go. Here we go over to this side. This one's actually got the... Uh, rubber dust boot it's meant to have on. I'll just place that there for now. And just like the other side, just try and hold a camera and do that at the same time. And that will start dripping. Also, all we've got to do now is monitor the brake fluid. We are using genuine Toyota brake fluid, dot three in from a sealed container. Drip, drip, drippity drip. You can see down to the minimum line. So what I'm going to do now is just pour in the new stuff because we don't want it to run out. And it only takes a tiny little bit of that blue dye to be in the mix to come through and mix through the rest of all the brake fluid. So don't expect it to stay looking beautiful yellow like that for long because you'll just see the color transformation. We've done a lot of brake fluid flushes on a lot of vehicles over the years. I don't really have a problem with the blue stuff, but what will happen is we'll do it. You'll see this thing being clean and even if we've got 99% out and there's 1% left, just wait a while and all that blue stuff will be back again and fill the whole thing and you'll be thinking, oh, they haven't done the brake fluid. Yes, watch and see, it might even happen in this video. So there it is, drip, 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 no moving parts, no need to pump the pedal, no need for a second person, no need for expensive or cheap tools. It's called gravity bleeding. It works the best, that's what I was taught from the start. And I've got to say, I'll still say, in my opinion, gravity bleeding works the best. So while it's dripping away, you can go and change your oil, your oil filter. You can do lots of things. Just make sure you don't get dust, water, dirt or anything in this hole. And don't forget about it, because if you let it run out, you'll be starting from scratch again, which isn't the end of the world either. You just got to make sure you, uh, you know, allow all the air to come through so it all does go through clean. And there's no secret tricks when you've got the ABS unit to bleeding um, the brake system, it's as simple as this. If you're replacing it, could be a little bit different. That's another story, not in this video. But if you've got the 150 Prado with the accumulator master cylinder here, the only difference is you need to leave the key on. So you need to make sure you've got a good battery and uh, happy days. Bada bing, bada boom would be the uh, answer there. We're just going to let this slowly bleed through. We've got a couple other things to do, which will be in other videos. So subscribe, turn the bell on and we'll continue this one very soon just waiting trip 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 so you can use a drone tray like that whatever you want right that'll do the job you got to mop around it afterwards anyway because a bit of a splash here and there like i said clean the vehicle clean the floor clean the drain container well you can even make a container and i just want to show you see the blue stuff that's coming out out with the old in with the not blue but you watch it all go blue anyway you can get an old five liter container cut the side out of it that contains all the mess pretty well Okay, so you can see how clean it is. Bleeding, bleeding through a bit. This back reservoir here going through. This one's still got some colour in it. The rest of it's pretty clean. But watch and see what happens next time you see the vehicle. The whole thing will be blue again. Over this side, it actually looks like it's running out fairly clear now, which is Even good. Over this side, you can see the colour at the backs of the area where it's dripping is definitely more clear. So I'm happy with that. What we'll do, we'll just wait till the... Um, we might even close them because we haven't actually pumped up the brake pedal either. And the same thing, when you do your pads and rotors, you do need to pump up the pedal before you drive the vehicle or you might not have any brakes. Very important information. Okay, so when you get back in the vehicle and it's that 
being aware and not pushing it to the floor thing because if you push it to the floor you've just done that pushing it past its normal travel which is one of the main reasons we've said to do brake fluid changes and brake fluid bleeds using the gravity method so i'm going to close up those down there at the moment and just give the the vehicle some nice short pumps on the brake pedal you know rather than Right, I'm just going to go lots of little dabs. I don't care if I've got to dab it 20 times, okay? Because we want it to only go its normal travel, and that'll push the pads out to where they're meant to be, and we'll set the final level on the maximum line. So there you have it. Pedals pumped up nicely. Bleeders are closed. Don't over-tighten them. They are a hollow screw, a very hollow. They've got a big hole up the middle, so it's going to be something like, I don't know, 10 newton metres, maybe five. I don't even know. Of a tapered seat just nicely to stop the fluid doesn't have to hold the whole car together or the engine or the caliper just stop the fluid from coming out it's just got a seat nicely but tight enough that hydraulic pressure doesn't leak out so it's one of those things you get to know or you look up the torque spec which i don't have for you i'm sorry very important to look that up now we're going to get that filter back in there and get that cap back on and close this up as soon as possible and we'll wrap this one up with a bit of final information we promised throughout the recent brake videos for anything that I missed. The filter's in position, as you can see, not that we needed it, but uh, there it is, because that's how it goes. Now, for the people that watched the three videos and hung around to the end, why are we using the LSI brake pads and rotors? Well, firstly, many years ago, I noticed they had the genuine Toyota oil filters, and uh, I thought, well, I'll get a pack of those and see what they're like. Noticed they were genuine, told a few people about it, let's say, you know, a few people. And a lot of people have been using their oil filters for a lot of years. And they've always been genuine and seems to be very fast service. I recently contacted them and said, hey, you know, uh, I think I'm going to tell people about your filters, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, sort of a bit of chit chat. What else have you got for us sort of thing? And mentioned that they've got a new website. They've got rotors. They've got pads, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, pricing. Yep, good value for money. Let's check it out. And... I've got to put my money where my mouth is and try a set of these pads and rotors out. So that's what it's all about. They've offered us a discount just for asking, you know, obviously cheaper off rather than eBay off their website. Cheaper again with that discount code 4B4-2023, spelt like the YouTube channel, you know, 4B4-2023. Um, so that's what it's all about. We've got a discount there. We've got value for money products. We've got awesome customer service, fast shipping. Let me know in the comments if you experience anything other than that. I'll be surprised if we can even find one. And if you've got any problems, I'll be surprised if it isn't resolved quickly. Um, I know the owner now, so... Uh, worst case scenario, I reckon I can put my money where my mouth is and say, hey, we need to help out this guy. This has happened, that's happened, but I don't think it'll even come to that. I reckon they're all over it. Look how beautiful that brake fluid is. Mark my words, that blue little blue bit that's left, it's coming up to discolour the whole thing in no time. But anyway, let's just pretend we didn't see that and you can keep an eye out in another video. So now that we've sealed all that up, it's time for a bit of a clean up on the outside. It's time to remove... I'm not too fussed about whether the caps are there or not, but they're nipped up nicely. Remove the drain tray and we're going to give it a quick wash down followed by a, more of a wash down later outside, like a car wash type wash down. All right, wheels are on. Don't forget your torque spec, about 110, 115 Newton metres. Yeah, I say about because, you know, in some books, 108, 113, different models, they changed it. It's the same start and the same hub as long as you're around the 110, 115. You're laughing, Newton metres, not too much more. Not too much less, everything will be okay. Double checking your mind, you've not forgotten anything. Now it's time to take it outside and give it a good proper clean up. Okay, so it's had its final clean up out here. Give it some time for all that blue to come through here, it'll happen. And uh, it's all Mickey Mouse clean out here. And wash down Mickey Mouse clean out here as well. Mickey Mouse, you know, beautiful. Just like a new one, look at that, beautiful. Now it's time for a road test. We've got to drive it, make sure the brakes still work because I worked on the car. And if the brakes still work and you didn't forget anything, all those nuts and all those lines and all those wheel nuts and all that brake bleeding and all that stuff, and you didn't forget anything, then you've succeeded and you're not going to kill anyone. So like I said at the start of these videos, if you shouldn't be touching cars, maybe these jobs aren't for you. But hopefully there's some information in here that if you're going to do it anyway, it helps you complete it a little bit more safely and successfully. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, turn the more bell on because more videos on brakes and other stuff coming your way. Thanks for watching and keep your eye out on that because I'm not doing anything. I'm not putting any more blue in there, but I reckon it's going to go all blue. Always happens. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.